in the, new in the new covenant in a way that even like Abraham and Moses did not know God. So, uh, and knowing him as father is a huge part of that. Uh, if you recall at the burning bush, uh, Moses says, what do I call you? He says, you will know me by my name. I am who I am. Now, uh, in Hebrew, names mean a lot more uh, than what they do now. You, you will know me. Uh, God is saying, you will know me more intimately. I will reveal more of myself to you than I did even to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. See, the, uh, in Genesis, Abraham is recorded as using God's name. He knew his name, but when he says that uh, you will know me by my name, God is saying, Moses, I am going to show, show uh, to you more of myself. You will know me in a more intimate way than Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob did. I am going to reveal more of who I am to you. And so the same thing is true here. When Christ comes and he is revealing to us uh, that God is our Father, it's the same kind of thing. We are knowing God in a more intimate way. We are, we are, are given more revelation uh, than they were given. We have, a, uh, in a sense, a closer relationship with him than they did in the Old Testament. And so, so don't miss that. And it is, again, it is only at the coming of the Son, the true Son, who shows us the Father, who has revealed the Father to us. So he, he is the only one, in a sense, that can actually ever reveal God as Father properly to us. If God had done it through Moses or through Abraham, it wouldn't have been the same thing. But it's the true Son who knows the Father himself, who himself has seen the Father. He is the one who has revealed the Father to us. Therefore, we know the Father now through Christ, the true Son, uh, in a way that they did not know, know him uh, in the Old Testament. Now... Christ's instruction is that we pray to the Father. Uh, now, that does not mean that this is not a Trinitarian prayer. Okay? Uh, if you were going to pray a true prayer, it must be Trinitarian. Only true prayer uh, can be Trinitarian. It can't be anything else. If it's not Trinitarian, that's not a true prayer. Now, what I mean by that uh, is that we pray, uh, as per Christ's instruction, to the Father through the Son in the power of the Holy Spirit uh, who is working in us. Now, I don't think, I mean, I'm positive. This doesn't rule out praying to other members of the Trinity. It's not that you can't pray to Jesus or you can't pray to the Holy Spirit. That's absolutely acceptable. Uh, of course you can do that. God is one. That just says, I and the Father are one. We are baptized in the one name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Uh, there's not degrees of divinity or anything like that. But I, I think the general instruction of the Bible is that the pattern of our prayer should be to the Father, through the Son, that the working of the Holy Spirit within us. And I, I think I can back that up a little bit. Christ says in John 16, I do not say that I will ask the Father on your behalf, but the Father himself loves you. The Father himself wants to hear from you. He doesn't want, want, want me, uh, he, he doesn't want you to me or uh, me to him. No, 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 the Father himself wants to hear you. You go through me, but he wants to hear from you himself. The Father himself loves you. Ephesians 1, 16 through 17, uh, Paul, I do not cease to give thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation of the knowledge of him. Ephesians 2, through Christ we have access in one spirit to the Father. Ephesians 3, for this reason I bow my knees before the Father. Ephesians 5, giving thanks always and for everything to God the Father in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Colossians 1.3, we always thank God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, when we pray for you. Colossians 1.12, giving thanks to the Father. Colossians 3.17, whatever you do in order deep, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God, the Father, through him. Uh, 1 John 2.1, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. So again, now, it's not that it's improper ever to pray to Jesus or to the Holy Spirit, but I think the general pattern of our prayer uh, as seen in the New Testament, the instruction of Christ, especially when he says, I do not say that I will pray to the Father for you, but the Father himself loves you. The Father wants to hear from you. I think uh, the general pattern of prayer is to be to the Father uh, through the Son and the power of the Holy Spirit. Now, I think there's a little bit of hesitation sometimes on our part. I'll, say, I'll be the first to say, there certainly is on my part. Uh, to be a little bit like uh, this guy who's an arch heretic, his name is Marcion, uh, and he believed uh, that the, the God of the Old Testament was this old, mean, grumpy God, uh, ready to strike you uh, for the first sin you committed, and that the old New Testament God is new, different. Uh, he is loving, patient, kind. Uh, and I think there is a little bit of all of that in us. There is a little bit of hesitation sometimes. So I'll, I'll be the first to admit, there would be, I can remember, I don't remember what it was for, but I've been praying and praying and praying for something and praying this pattern to the Father, and I frankly wasn't getting the answer I wanted. So what did I do? 
I started praying the same thing to Jesus, right? Thinking that somehow, like, you know, well, maybe, uh, maybe it'll work this way if I do this. Okay, well, what is it? There was a little bit of Marcion in me, thinking, uh, well, maybe I need to go to Jesus and the Father. Maybe the Father just doesn't. You know, he's not getting what I want here. Uh, maybe he isn't, isn't going to do uh, as I really want to. But maybe Jesus will be the loving, kind Jesus uh, will do it for me. Now, um, so, so I think there's a little bit of, a bit of that in us. But I think the Old Testament tells us, no, 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 no. That we, the Father himself loves us and he wants to hear from us. So go to the Father. He loves you. Now, uh, and that kind of brings us into our next point uh, that, that I think will do away with that little bit of Marcion that's in all of us. I, and I really think there is, that, that, that there is a little bit of him in us. That is, that in saying, uh, our Father, our Father, there is gospel undergirding that. That uh, with, it is because of the gospel that we do this. And we have the gospel because of the Father. You see, um, it's something like, okay, here we go. 33 times, I looked this up, 33 times in the Gospel of John, Jesus says, I have not, something to the effect, I have not come on my own will, but it is the Father who sent me. 33 times he mentions this, the Father who sent him. This is the Father who loves us. Think of John 3.16. God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten Son, that all who believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Who is talking about? The Father so loved this wicked world that he gave his only begotten Son that whoever uh, believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. See, it was God. It was God who initiated this. It was God who sent his Son so that we would be reconciled to him. It all comes from the Father. He's him the starting point of it. John 5, 24. Whoever hears my word and believes him who sent me has eternal life. John 5, 30. I seek not my own will, but the will of him who sent me. John 6. Uh, I have come down from heaven. Uh, not to do my own will, but the will of him who sent me. John 8, 42. I have come not of my own accord, but he, the Father, sent <coughs> me. Bless you. Bless you. Now, um, so it is the Father who sent Christ, but it is the Father who loves us, the Father who wants to hear from us. We know also that apart from Christ, we simply cannot call God Father. He is the only way to the Father, John 14, 6. Uh, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me, Jesus Christ. Uh, we have one mediator between God and man, the man, Jesus Christ. And, uh, also, if you do not have the Son, you do not have the Father. So we simply cannot come uh, to the Father by anyone but Christ. And um, I, I know we're flying through some things here. There's no way uh, in, in one Sunday school lesson we could exhaust, I'll exhaust all of this, uh, let alone the other parts of this, or the fact that we come to God only through Christ. Just know that we do uh, come to him through Christ and Christ alone. If you come to him by any other way, then you're not going to him. Uh, you are really uh, worshiping an idol. Now, if God is not our father, then Satan is our father. Uh, there's no in-between. You're with me or against me. Christ says, if you're lukewarm, you're really not lukewarm. I'm going to spit you out of, out, out of my mouth. There really is no such thing as lukewarm. You're with him or against him. Uh, we do the will of the one we serve. That is either we do uh, uh, Satan's will and we do evil, or we do God's will and we act in righteousness. Now, um, we remember uh, that Christ brings this out in John chapter 8. Uh, and, and what, uh, at least reading it, is probably the most heated of all of the discussions or, or arguments that he has with the Pharisees. I mean, just reading it, you can see uh, that the temperature in the room rises quickly. Uh, Jesus says, uh, you, you, they say, uh, you know, we have not been enslaved to anyone. We are Abraham's children, which actually isn't true because they were enslaved in Egypt. Nevertheless, uh, they say, we haven't been enslaved uh, ever. We are Abraham's children. He says, no, 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 no. He says, if you, if you were Abraham's children, you would love me. You see, you would love me and you would serve the Father. No, no, no. You do the will of your father, the devil. You see, there's only two. You see, that, that sets them off. Uh, uh, they accuse uh, Mary uh, of promiscuity, uh, and, and it seems to really set Jesus off, and he kind of goes off on them. Uh, he says, you are doing the works that your father did. You see, if God were your father, you would love me, for I came from God and I am here. I came not of my own accord, but he sent me. Why don't you understand what I say? Because you cannot bear to hear my word. You are of your father, the devil, and your will is to do your father's desires. So, uh, and also, in saying such, as voice points out, that uh, when Christ says that, that does away uh, with this kind of false idea uh, of the universal fatherhood 
of God, uh, that God is everyone's father, that we are all his children. Now, it's, it, it's true in a sense that, that he is the creator of all. We are all his creation. But in this sense, this having a relationship, father and, and his child relationship with him, no, that is for those who are in Christ and Christ alone. Uh, otherwise, your father is the devil. Now, for those of us in Christ, we are adopted as sons of God through Christ, who is the true Son. So we are brought out of the kingdom of darkness and brought into the kingdom of heaven by Christ, by Christ and Christ alone. Uh, uh, voice comments that we are no longer children of wrath and disobedience, but now we are children of love, faith, and obedience. See, uh, this is, uh, 1 John 3, this is what John says. It says, uh, see what kind of love the Father has given us, that we should be children of God, and so we are. You see, uh, this is that John is just kind of uh, uh, in, a, in amazement here. He says, see what kind of love the Father's given us, that we should be called children of God, and so we are. This is because God, remember, uh, R.C. Sproul is God is holy, holy, holy. Well, uh, the, the reason that John uh, is so amazed by this is because we are wicked, wicked, wicked. Uh, there's an, 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 for ourselves, there's an infinite gap between us and God. Uh, I remember Dr. Sproul one time uh, giving a, this presentation that I was watching. He says, uh, you are much more like Hitler than you are Jesus. So, and that's very true. We are much more like Hitler than, than, than like Christ. And so John says, uh, you see what kind of great love the Father has given us and that he has poured out upon us in his Son, that we would be called his children. And it is as those in Christ that we are God's children and that we have been given the Holy Spirit by whom we cry, Abba, Father, Galatians 4, 5 through 7, God sent his son to redeem us so that we might receive his adoption as sons. And because you are sons, God has sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. So you are no longer a slave, but a son. And if you are a son, then an heir through God. Now, uh, uh, basically it goes like this. The father sent his son We, through Christ, become sons. And because Christ is the Son and the true heir, we therefore become heirs with him. You see, I, I guess I'm stressing this. I, I want you to understand that this all comes from the Father. Again, Christ, 33 times in John alone, he says, I did not come but it, uh, of my own accord, but it was the Father who sent me. You see, it was the Father who initiated all this, that we would inherit all that, 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 that rightfully belongs to Christ, that we would inherit through him. You see, it's not that we, uh, it's the, 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 through the true Son, that we become, uh, we become children of God. So again, this is why uh, the, I mentioned this last time. Uh, that in be thou my vision, I thy true son. That, that's why I stumble over this, because Christ is the only true son. That we, we are truly sons through him, but we are not the true son. We are not actually deity. Christ himself is. The, and, and we inherit through Christ all that he, he inherits from the Father. That means that we inherit the new heavens and the new earth. That means that we reign forevermore with Christ, uh, and that, that we live forever in his presence, experiencing nothing but everlasting joy, uh, peace, prosperity, uh, and true fellowship with God and man. A complete opposite of those outside of Christ who, who, who will be raised with bodies fit for destruction, uh, that, that uh, they will be given bodies uh, not fit for glory, but fit for hell, uh, uh, which they will never escape. Now, that kind of brings us to our next point, that uh, in calling God our Father, there really is no more intimate relationship uh, that we could have with him. I mean, there's a, what, what, what way of knowing God except as Father could be more intimate, it could be more close than that? I don't think there is one. And, and, and I think if there is one, we would have it. Now, that means a couple of things, as cliche as this may sound. It does mean that we should have a childlike faith, just as, as little children, uh, when we looked up to our parents, uh, you know, you can remember being little, uh, it, it, some, uh, you, you know, it wasn't as if you distrusted your parents at all. You were worried that they weren't going to feed you or clothe you or take that. It even crossed your mind. You were totally consumed with picking your nose or doing something else. Uh, you, you just you thought that your parents were going to take care of everything for you. Now, and Christ brings that out in the sermon. Now, let me follow this. Okay. In Matthew 6, 25 through 33, which is, which is a little bit after this, he says, Christ says, therefore I tell you, this theme of God being the Father, he's brought this out a few times in the sermon. He says, 
Therefore, I tell you, because God is your Father, I tell you, don't be anxious about your life, what you're going to eat or what you're going to drink or your body, what kind of clothing you're going to wear. So look at even the birds. They don't do anything. They don't sow. Or they don't reap. But God feeds them every day, does he not? He says, look at the flowers, these beautiful flowers. He says, uh, they're here and then they're gone. Yeah, every day, God clothes them in beauty. So, and how much more valuable are you than a bird or one of these flowers on the side of the road? Don't you know that your Father is going to take care of your needs for you? The, the Gentiles are the ones who seek after these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them all, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. The, uh, in Matthew 6, 8, which is right before the Lord's Prayer, it really kind of hints at this a little bit, it says uh, that the Father knows what you need before you even ask him. Nevertheless, he wants us to come to him and ask him. Uh, and in chapter 7, uh, he brings this out even more. He says, now look, even sinners uh, will give their children bread when they ask for bread. If they ask for a sandwich, they're not going to give them a rock. So how much more do you think your father will give you good things? Uh, how much more will your father who is in heaven give you good, good things to those who ask him? Now, uh, in the Luke recording, uh, which I don't know if it, it, it seems like almost it was, it was uh, and that Christ was teaching every day. So it seems like maybe he, he was kind of teaching the same thing twice and maybe two different accounts, or just kind of a more condensed account. Nevertheless, uh, in Luke, uh, that last part, he says, don't you know the Father will give good things to those who ask? And he says, in Luke, he says, how much more will the Heavenly Father give you the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? So it is absolutely proper for us who are indwelt by the Holy Spirit to go to God uh, and to ask him for the help of the Holy Spirit. We are weak, weak, weak. And without God, we can do nothing. It was Christ say, apart from me, you can do nothing at all. But we are indwelt by the Spirit of Christ, so it is absolutely proper to ask the Father that by His Spirit, that He would help us in our weaknesses. This also means that we have a loving Heavenly Father who cares for us, to whom we are to go in prayer. We are to go to Him with our cares and our burdens, 1 Peter 5. Uh, cast all your anxieties or all your burdens on Him because He cares for you. We are to go to Him for deliverance. Psalm 46, he is an ever-present help in time of trouble. Psalm 34, this poor man called out, and the Lord heard him. He saved him from all his troubles. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. Now, we are to go to him for forgiveness. Salvation is of the Lord, which uh, I don't want to steal anyone's thunder down the road that will be uh, coming. We are to go to him for our daily needs, which again, further down in the Lord's Prayer. Uh, we are to go to him also for wisdom, James 1.5. If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask God, who gives generously and to all without approach, and it will be given to him so long as you ask in faith. We also have God as our Father who disciplines us, which is a form of love. And there is a, a movement uh, today uh, amongst certain uh, people that uh, do not think you should even spank your child. Uh, which is absolutely, I don't have a kid, but I can't, that's got to be crazy. There's no way. Uh, and, and the Bible says, do not spare your child the rod. That's what they learn. Right? Now, I personally actually never got spanked growing up. The reason I never got spanked was because I knew, I knew my dad would spank me. And I did not want him. So I, 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 he, it wasn't that he wouldn't have spanked me, but, you know, he was kind of against it. I 100% knew he would, so I never, I, I never got that far. But God is a God who disciplines us out of his love. Hebrews 12, 5 through 6. Do not regard lightly the discipline of the Lord, nor be weary when reproved by him. The Lord disciplines the ones he loves and chastises every son whom he receives. I know there are others here with children who uh, are much, have much more experience talking about this. But just as, as you reprove your child or you discipline your child so that they do not do a certain thing again because you love them. Uh, you don't really care how mad they are at you. You know, you love them, and so you're going to discipline them uh, in hopes that they do not do whatever it was they did again. And so the Father does the same for us. Now, ultimately, our Father in Heaven is the one who provides for all of our needs. Uh, John, John the Baptist says, A person can receive nothing except to be given to him by God. James 1.17, Every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of the lights. Now, because God is our Father, uh, remember we go back to this little thing, a little bit of Martian in us. Uh, actually, we should not be discouraged uh, to go to God the Father, but because He is our Father, we should be encouraged to go to Him. 
Psalm 50, 15. Uh, Call upon me in the day of trouble, and I will answer you. Uh, uh, further uh, down, where is this? Where Jesus says, if you ask, ask, and you will receive. If you ask according to faith and, and according to his will. If you ask it, you will receive it. Uh, Martin Luther comments about those two promises. He says uh, that they should encourage and kindle our hearts to pray with pleasure and delight. Uh, that God uh, would not command us to pray to him if he did not intend on answering our prayers, which just seems kind of obvious, but it's like, yeah, you know, that's right. If he didn't intend on answering our prayers, then he wouldn't command us to come to him. Now, we'll look at this, uh, these other two parts, just briefly. Again, the, the, there's infinitely more you could say about uh, God being our father. Uh, it, it's, I mean, it's, the lesson was like, well, what, what in the world do I need about? Uh, I mean, we could do lesson and lesson and lesson over this and never exhaust this. Uh, so, so certainly uh, do uh, uh, seek other resources uh, in learning more about God as our Father because, uh, I, I, I mean, we'll never be able to exhaust them. Now, when we call him our Father, it tells us something. When we say our Father, that's all of us. When we say, when we say that, it tells us something about how we should also regard not just God but one another. Uh, despite maybe uh, uh, differences in interpretation uh, on certain things, uh, so long as someone uh, is, 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 is trusting in Christ, in Christ alone for their salvation, uh, they are a brother or a sister in Christ, no matter uh, you know, all sorts of wrong doctrine. We ourselves, uh, I, I know being reformed, I, uh, we, we take pride in, uh, in, in, in having solid doctrine. And if, if I didn't think uh, reformed theology was right, I guess I wouldn't be here. Um, but, but we don't have it all worked out. I mean, we don't have perfect theology. I doubt anyone walking has perfect theology. Uh, but, but if someone is trusting in Christ and Christ alone, then they are our brother or sister in Christ. Uh, 1 Peter 2, 22. 1 Peter something, verse 22, because I forgot to put the, the uh, chapter. With sincerely brotherly love, love one another earnestly from a pure heart. Romans 12, be devoted to one another in brotherly love. John 13, 34, Christ says, a new commandment I give to you, love one another as I have loved you, so you must also love one another. Now there's also a huge difference uh, when we say our Father and when Christ says my Father. Um, this is a claim to deity, and the Jews knew it. Christ was saying, God is my Father, I come from him, that I am of the same substance as the Father. As a matter of fact, I am God. Before Abraham was, I am. He identifies himself as the God of the Old Testament. He is one with him and of the very same substance. Now, we as creatures, uh, we are made in God's image and likeness, and we are to reflect uh, his image and likeness. Uh, but when Christ says that he is God's son and God is, is his father, he is speaking uh, of being deity. In Christ, the fullness of the Godhead dwells bodily. Um, he is the exact imprint or representation of the Father's image. And uh, that's why he says, I am the Father of one. If you have seen me, you have seen the Father. So uh, there, is, there is a world of difference. This uh, almost got him stoned at least twice that we know about. Uh, calling God our Father. Uh, this is, we call God our Father through uh, the true Son, through the one who says, My Father. Now, um, our Father in heaven. Father in heaven. Uh, that immediately tells us something about God and about us. Does it not? I mean, I mean just inherently, uh, you recognize that God is in heaven and you are here, that God uh, exists eternally. Uh, he, he is indebted to no man. He does not need anybody for his existence. Nevertheless, you are from the dust of the earth. Right? I mean, doesn't it just scream that to you? Kind of God, our Father in heaven. And here we are on earth, creatures made by him. And, and so it should. And it is intentional to call us to uh, remember that God is the creator of heaven and earth. Uh, it says, the scripture says that even the highest of heavens cannot contain him. Uh, nevertheless, the Bible says that uh, God's throne is in heaven. That that's where he is. Uh, so there's a sense in where uh, God is everywhere. There's nothing to contain him. But again, uh, you know, similar, similarly to the way um, that God uh, it lived in the temple of the Old Testament in a special way. And it's not that the temple could contain him. Uh, but the, that he manifested his presence uh, in a special way there in a number of times in the Old Testament. Um, of course, now uh, we don't, not, 
don't have the temple. Uh, uh, Jesus uh, bridged the veil. Uh, we are indwelt by God himself. Uh, nevertheless, uh, God, God is in heaven above. We are in the earth below. Ecclesiastes 5, 2. Be not rash with your mouth, nor let your heart be hasty to utter a word before God, for God is in heaven and you are on earth. Therefore, let your words be few. Isaiah 66, 1. Heaven is God's throne. The earth is his footstool. God is the creator of heaven and earth. His throne is in, is in heaven, though the highest of heavens cannot contain him. We are from the dust, creatures. Uh, and therefore, we should be reminded of this and also reminded of God's holiness and our sinfulness. Uh, and now, uh, we're just going to close up here. Um, Christ has revealed the Father to us. Uh, so if you in any way say, I, you know, I, I, I want to see the Father. I want to be like, I think a number of us do want to be like Philip. We say, uh, you know, we, we want to see the Father. And Christ himself says this. Philip, are you kidding me? Haven't you been paying attention? He said, if you have seen me, you have seen the Father. I am the exact image of him. His exact representation standing here, right here in front of you. The Father sent me. I have manifested him perfectly. There's nothing I haven't told you. All that the Father has told me, I have told you. I have manifested everything there is for you to know about the Father right now. So if you have seen the Father, you have seen me. So if you want to see the Father, look to the Lord Jesus Christ. He will show you the Father uh, and, and throughout all of Scripture, which is his word. Any questions? Comments? We'll write it down a little later. I have a comment. You went through what you were saying about uh, praying to the Father. The normal pattern to pray to the Father and not to Jesus. We, we pray, like you said, to the Father through the Son in the power of the Spirit. But it, there are a couple of examples of, uh, you know, like you said, you don't think it's inappropriate. Pray to Jesus and pray to the Holy Spirit for them all the time. But Stephen, when he was being stoned, his last breath, he prayed to, directly to Jesus. And then, yeah, there are. I think Paul did too when uh, the thorn in the flesh. I think when he when he, he says uh, they pray, pray three times to the Lord and then the Lord answered me. Uh, it doesn't say that was Jesus. I think it was though, uh, probably. Uh, yeah, Paul also closed First Corinthians with the Maranatha, come Lord Jesus. John, and John does as well. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I don't think that that's inappropriate. At all. I don't think it's inappropriate uh, uh, to address to just address God in a triune manner and pray to God as Father, Son, and Spirit. Not, yeah, I, I don't want to disparage doing that at all. Not one bit. I, I whatever I you say. Despite those exactly what you were saying, it, it's not yeah. inappropriate. To no, not not at all. Each is fully God. Each is fully God. I, it is not not inappropriate at all to say, oh, uh, Blessed Holy Spirit, please help me. Uh, I need you. I need you now. I'm gonna. I need you. Whatever it might be. Uh, I know. Whenever we uh, take the Lord's Supper, uh, I think every time my prayer, uh, when I'm just sitting there, kind of silently, my prayer is to Jesus. Uh, whenever we're taking the supper, and I'm not trying to pat myself on the back. I'm just like, uh, it absolutely, one thousand percent can pray to Jesus. Uh, Jesus even says uh, uh, that uh, we ask for the Holy Spirit. He says, I will give it to Him. So, um, yeah, absolutely. Uh, each, of, each is God. I just think, I think the, the general pattern, I think, I, I, I could be wrong, I think uh, it is to the Father uh, by the Son and the Spirit, but um, yeah, it's, it's never wrong no, you're, at you're, all. At all. You're not wrong there. Okay. okay. <laughs> that is the pattern that we're about to pray. Can I add that uh, Stephen was actually literally looking at Jesus at that moment? Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Is that it? That's all I've got. I know, I know we kind of flew through that. I'll close this with prayer. Heavenly Father, great and awesome God, Lord, we thank you so much for this time together. We thank you for your word. We thank you for the word incarnate, your own son who has uh, purchased us by his very own blood. We thank you for the Holy Spirit who indwells us, Lord, and works in us according to his good pleasure. And Lord, we pray that you would help us by your spirit. Uh, as we come to worship you, that you would set our hearts and our minds on you, and, and, and not just us, but all your saints around the world. Lord, we pray that you would be with Caleb, that you would work mightily in him by your Holy Spirit uh, to faithfully and boldly proclaim your word, and that, uh, that we would receive your word with open hearts. Lord. And we pray that uh, for all those preaching and hearing your word. It is in the name of your dear Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, that we pray. Amen. 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 Amen.